Howdy doody, good people of YouTube. This is your buddy Chopadong again, coming at you with another quick tip video. We're going to try and make this one short and sweet today and save you some time. There are a couple of things that I do want to cover. Number one, where is your edge in DFS? And number two, we are going to go shooting fish in a barrel, baby. This is probably one of the edges that you're going to have is locating the fish and the bad players. The one thing that I do want to start by talking about is what is your edge. And I relate it to, uh, to uh, where I cut my teeth as a poker player back in the day online. Um, my edge is in finding the inexperienced player. That's what I would call a fish or a donkey. He's the guy that is going to chase inside straights, get uh, you know, married to a poker hand that the board has just turned into rubbish, and he's going to just continue dumping money into the pot and onto the table. And a guy like me with a little bit more experience that's been there and done that before and has learned that lesson is going to just sit back and just collect the money, put it in my pocket, and live the fight another day, maybe go home and pay some bills with it. The DFS fish is uh, also going sort of the way of the dodo bird. Because when going back to the online poker era, the guys that were really bad poker players, unless they were complete addicts and degenerates, either got smarter or quit putting money into the game. They realized they sucked and they said, I'm out, I'm done, I don't need to play anymore. And so what started happening was that, let's call it the bottom of the intelligence spectrum, started coming up off the floor, getting higher and higher and higher. And as that curve or that that line of that bottom intelligence of that fish started approaching the you know middle of the pack or or you know you're in there somewhere. And as that bottom starts creeping up towards you, you gotta stay ahead of that curve, man, to maintain your edge. If you don't, you're getting caught by the fish and you're becoming the fish because I'm not the smartest DFS player in the world. You're probably not the smartest DFS player in the world. So eventually that edge is going to catch me before it catches a smarter player. So I don't want to become the fish. I need to stay ahead of that curve. The, the way we do that in DFS is kind of the same way because as more information is out there and more premium sites are out there and more people pay for advice and coaching and whatever else, they're, they're getting ahead of that curve. They're staying ahead of that curve. They're using that, that premium service to provide them advanced analytics. They're using that service to provide them the coaching and the answers to their questions so that they don't have to go do all the legwork themselves. And they're getting better, and they're getting better fast. If you're not that guy, you need to contemplate picking up a premium service. This is something, look, I don't push sales. That's not my deal. Okay. Yeah, I'm a tout. Yeah, I talk DFS Army all the time. But that's not, I, I, I talk, if I don't mean it, I don't say it. And what I'm telling you right now, eye to eye, through a computer, face to face, in your ear, is that if you are not part of a premium service with an advanced analytics, tools, spreadsheets, optimizers, um, coaching advice, a community that actually answers your questions, instead of just sells you a lineup and turns you loose to the wolves and says, hey, this will win for you. I mean, that, that's like telling you, hey, dude, the first drug is free. I mean, that's ridiculous. If you're not getting the actual coaching and the actual answers to your questions, you are falling behind the curve, man, because your competition is getting answered answers to their questions. They are getting smarter faster. They are growing as players, and they're eventually going to catch you. So... That's my little plug for DFS Army. You know, give me a, a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up in the bottom of the video if you want the coaching and stuff to continue out here for free. But the bottom line is I can't go into the detail that I can go into inside the DFS Army and our Slack channels where I do nothing but sit here and talk to these guys on a daily basis in all of these different channels that we have. From you know the NFL to NHL to my own coaches coaching corner to whatever, and you see that we're all very very active in here, and we're constantly talking all the time. So point is, that edge is creeping up on you. It is narrowing, and as that edge narrows, your variance is going through the roof. If I had a coin that I knew was going to land on heads nine out of ten times and you did not know that, you're my fish, you're my donkey, and I'm betting you even money, a dollar for a dollar, I'll get a dollar every time it lands on heads, and you get a dollar every time it lands on tails, you're going to come in, you're going to take that bet, and I'm going to fleece you. 
and I'm going to do it with all of my bankroll and I will play for higher dollars than you might because you're not comfortable not knowing the situation I know the situation I know that my edge is very very secure over you I know that while luck may you know screw me one time out of ten that nine times out of ten I'm coming out ahead if my edge is that large over you I am all in I'm putting my car keys on the table man I mean I'm putting my, my cell phone, my kids, every, you know, their college educations, I'll put my car keys on the table and, and flat out play you for pinks because it's very, I have such a large advantage over you. As that edge starts getting closer and closer and closer to 50-50, God forbid it ever goes negative, then my variance is going to, it's not a steady bet anymore. It's not something where I can just bank on knowing that I'm going to win most of the time. It's I might win, say, 60% of the time, and you might win 40% of the time, and I may be a smarter player, more experienced player, whatever, but the variance of that coin flip getting to, you know, closer and closer to zero. If we took a true coin and flipped it, say, 10 times, have you ever done that and seen it come up heads nine times out of 10? It happens. So in a nine time out of 10, you know, scenario, like I talked about before, if it's a true coin, that was luck. That was variance. I, to get it closer to 50-50, guess what? We need to go again. And we need to go again. And we need to go again. And we need to go again. And, and if we run that out 100, 200, 500, 1,000 times, that number's going to get closer and closer to 50-50. But what it's going to do in the meantime is it's going to fluctuate. It's going to go on massive runs for heads and massive runs for tails. Three in a row, seven in a row, maybe 20 in a row if I flip the coin 1,000 times. I might get heads 20 times in a row. Who knows? But that's a crazy run. That if I'm in that, that, So my volatility in the short run is going to be high. Because why? My edge is so small in that scenario that the volatility need, you know, is, is up and down, up and down, up and down until we get way over the long haul. If you're an inexperienced player and I've only got a 10% edge over you, on any given Sunday, you can kick my ass. Hell, two in a row. Three in a row. I need to run you out over 16 weeks for my edge to materialize and start taking over and taking control of that variance. I need to run that edge over a 162 game baseball season. And if I run it out 162 games, yeah, any given week, seven in a row, yeah, you could beat me all seven. A lot of guys in DFS get down on that. You got to understand, in a highly volatile game with a lot of variance in it, like baseball, those runs happen. They don't mean you're a good player or a bad player. You don't know yet. Now, you play for a year or play for two years, you're going to start getting an idea. You know, if you can win over the course of a season, you did great. You did better than probably 60 to 75% of the DFS world. That's pretty good company to be in. Now, that's just how it goes. If you, if, but if you lost all of your bankroll in that first, say, 10 days, that doesn't mean you were a bad player. It just means you didn't have enough bankroll to last the long run. That's why we, treat, we preach bankroll management, too. But now, the second part of that edge since you understand a little bit of the volatility, and as if my edge is massive, there's not a lot of variance. I'm going to win. If my edge is very, very small, there's a lot of variance. I'm still going to win, but it's going to take me a long time for that to overcome the variance that is going to be up and down on day to day, week to week, or whatever. Okay? So understanding that, let's add to that edge because the larger we can make that edge, the smoother we can get our variance, the, the, the more dependable our winning will become. And one way we do that is we go shoot and fish in a barrel. The way I'm going to shoot, for those, the, shoot those fish is I'm going to dig into these contests and I'm going to analyze how many inexperienced players are in them. On FanDuel, they have stars. Blue stars are experienced players. And if you don't have a star, you're not experienced. And if you have a white star, you're kind of in the middle, kind of inexperienced, but not really super experienced. So I'm going to take this contest here that has 29 people in it and count the inexperienced people. Blue stars, I, I avoid. White stars and no stars, I consider inexperienced people. Doesn't mean they're not better than me. It just means given the information that I have sitting in front of me, I can bet on the fact that they're inexperienced. And if I can bet on the fact that they're inexperienced, I can bet on the fact that they're going to make mistakes that I theoretically have already learned not to make anymore. Therefore, I have an edge over them. As many of them in a contest with me as I can get, I want. 
I don't want to battle the experienced guys. That's just passing money back and forth and paying rake. I need an edge. I need an advantage in this contest. So I dig in and I'm looking for one, two, three, four players in this contest. So four out of 30, you know, a little more than 10%. If I scroll down a little bit to say this kind, well, that's a beginner contest. Of course, they're all going to have no stars there. 40 out of 50 in this contest. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a white star. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 out of 40 is almost 25%. It's a little more than 25%. Okay, so this is a better one. Are you going to take Evan Silva and jump on it? Um, this is a little bit better contest to be in. Yes, it has Evan Silva in it. Yes, it has, you know, you pay for my living and some of these other names that I recognize of guys that are high volume players. Maybe you see one or two in there that I don't. But generally speaking, this has a lot of soft players in it with no experience. That's a good contest to get in, despite those other guys being a 50-50. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit more to the $2 level, let's go down to this one. 89 players. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 out of 89. So again, about a fourth. Looks like that's about the number we're running these days anyway from just doing this over and over and over again. If I can find a fourth of the guys that are inexperienced in a contest, I'm jumping in it. If I run over to the 100-man leagues, there was one over here before that was pretty juicy if I can find it. Hopefully it's this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, roughly players already. Twenty-one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, one, two, three, four. I mean, I've already got thirty-five out of sixty-six players. I'm already over half of these players are inexperienced. This is going to be a soft contest. That should be, you should have an easier time winning this contest than you did the one that only had four, you know, inexperienced players in it. Does that make sense? That's when the light bulb should go on to you, is that that's when you should be getting in these contests. You want to spread your money out a little bit. You want to take on as many different 50-50s as you can because you want as much to smooth out variance. You want as much exposure to unique players as you can possibly get. Get a hundred of them here, you know, get a hundred of them here, being that this one doesn't have many players in it and this one has a lot in it already, you might be able to catch, you know, almost 200 unique players in there. Whereas if you did this one with 51 and this one with 64, there's going to be a lot of overlapping guys that went dink, dink. Okay? I don't tend to just enter my contests like this. I actually want to think about it a little bit because this is one of the factors I can control and smooth my variance out as much as I possibly can. Okay, so if I run over to DraftKings and do the same thing, just to show you what their bars look like, one bar is great, two bars not so good. Um, I'm looking for, you know, no bars. No bars is great. And I can count them up the same way, no bars, no bars, no bars, no bars, no bars. You know, one bar would be like your white star, two bars, your blue star. The little line under it just means a big, you know, they want a big cash, a big chunk somewhere. But no bars is like your no star. So look at all this. Look at all these no stars. And I mean, this is a good soft contest to get into. That you should have an advantage on if you're listening to this video because you take DFS more seriously than those guys with no stars. Okay? So the bottom line is stack the deck, you know, put the advantage in your favor, spread out, smooth out your variance as much as you can by getting exposed to as many unique 
competitors as you can, but also look within those contests for the inexperienced players and look for contests that tend to have more inexperienced players in them rather than just blindly entering these things and, you know, then just doing it. You can do a little bit more research and you can kind of control the aspect of it just a little bit more and slant the deck, hopefully slant the odds in your favor just a little bit more. If you like coaching like this and you want more of it, I'm telling you right now, you need to contemplate getting into the DFS Army. And the reason why, and I don't, guys, I'm a tout, yes, and I talk about the DFS Army because I believe in it. But I'm telling you right now, I don't tell you anything unless I believe it, unless I would be putting my own money there, okay? And I'm telling you right now, as that DFS curve grows, as those fish get smarter and or dry up and quit depositing money, and that curve starts coming up of the intelligence of the play of the average player starts getting higher and higher and higher if you're not doing something to physically stay in front of that curve you are actually falling behind you're becoming part of it's like a tsunami wave crashing ashore it is eventually going to overtake you you have to do whatever you can to stay ahead of that curve if you don't have the access to optimizers advanced analytics tools and, 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 and spreadsheets, and then, of course, a community of one-on-one -on -one coaching that doesn't just turn you loose on a lineup and say, here, go at it, kid, have, have fun with that, that actually answers your questions when you have them, this player or that player, and not so much this player or that player, but why? Why this player over that player in week five? Because we know it's going to change in week six. You need answers. And if you're one of these people like me that enjoys teaching and enjoys giving back, then it, first of all, you can still learn an awful lot by reassessing the fundamentals on a daily basis as people ask you questions. But you can also give back to the community that has given you a lot because I guarantee you, you've read articles, you've listened to podcasts, you've done whatever you can, um, and, and, and that helped you. Don't you want to give back to the community that, that made you a better player? Don't, I mean, I feel a pull, a, a sense of, of um, I, I don't know what the word would be, more or less a moral or an ethical sense, to give back to the community that gave to me and try to help pull some other people up, you know, that maybe are identifying themselves as wanting the help. So that's another reason that you would get involved in a community like ours. And I'm telling you, it's absolutely worth it. It's very rewarding. The guys are great. We're a close group. We're, we have a lot of fun. And we teach an awful lot of DFS. My DFS game has gotten so much better just being a contributor inside the army because of all the different questions from all the different angles. I can sort of study what people are thinking, maybe where they're going wrong, and then think about it myself. And in a lot of cases, I get tips from people that I would never have thought of either that make me think in a different way and go, oh, I should be thinking like that. That was very, very smart. So anyway, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a, you know, a subscription to the YouTube channel if you like this type of coaching, but if you're really the type of person that wants more in-depth content, more in-depth teaching and coaching to stay ahead of that curve, you need to contemplate visiting dfsarmy.com via the link in the description using that coupon code CHOP, C-H-O-P. Get in there, ask me questions, I'll ask you questions, we can have a great time. I will talk to you guys later.